Shout out to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. What's up YouTubers? I'm Daniel and today I'm going to try and use these as a combustion chamber for a pulse jet. Now I've never even built a pulse jet before so I have no idea if this is going to work. But let's give it a try. If you've never seen a pulse jet before, then you're probably not spending enough time on YouTube. These things are super inefficient, incredibly loud, and surprisingly simple. I'd say the success criteria here is just getting it into some sort of a resonance. I'm not trying to like make a bunch of thrust or anything like that. The key components for my build include a spark plug attached to a neon sign transformer for the ignition, a propane tank with a regulator and some tubing, and an EDF from an RC jet that I'll use to get the pulse jet started. There are two main types of pulse jets, valved and valveless. A valved pulse jet has a combustion chamber, an exhaust pipe, and a one-way valve that lets airflow in but not out. When the fuel inside explodes, the hot gas rushes out the exhaust. It's going so fast that it has a lot of momentum, or inertia, so it doesn't want to turn around and go back in. Since the gas left, there's now a low pressure area in the combustion chamber, and this causes the valves to open and fresh air comes in the back. That fresh air mixes with propane, explodes, and the cycle repeats. A valveless pulse jet is similar, but the difference is that instead of using a valve to control which direction the air flows, it uses clever geometry. After the fuel ignites, exhaust goes out the tailpipe and the intake. This leaves a low pressure in the combustion chamber. Since the gas that is going out the tailpipe has more volume, it also has more inertia, and it's harder to change direction. The gas going out the intake has less inertia, so it's faster to turn around and fill the low pressure void. Some fresh air gets sucked in with it, and that ignites with the fuel and starts the cycle over again. I'm going to try and make a valved pulse jet at first, because I think to make a valveless pulse jet, um, the geometries are a lot more tricky. They have to be just right. And obviously my geometries are a little bit more organic. So yeah, this is very experimental. No idea if it's going to work. So the first thing I want to try and do is just pop the end caps out of the pumpkin with just a little bit of propane. I've got a bunch of little holes drilled on the end of this long brass rod that goes to the propane tank. So we'll just stick it right in there. Okay, so we're just going to do just a little bit of gas and I'll press the button on the thing. Nothing. Huh. Well, maybe a little more gas. Press the thing. Still nothing, huh, weird. So I can't get the pumpkin to ignite, so I'm gonna try and get this smaller volume to ignite first. It's just a little cardboard box. So the box lit when I put the spark plug on the edge, so that makes me think it won't ignite because the fuel mixture inside is too rich. So I'm just gonna try igniting the pumpkin with the lid open first to see if that works so that we get some more air mixing with the propane. So that ignited, but there's no pressure inside. So I think to get it to pop, maybe I'll have to uh, fill it up with air first and then start the igniter before I turn on the propane. And then once it gets to the right mixture, it'll ignite. I'm gonna try that. Yeehaw! Okay, I've got it all set up. I'm just gonna go for it. The 3D printed blue thing is a one-way valve I designed. It uses little flapping doors on the inside to open and close as the gas tries to rush in and out. I did a lot of tinkering with this project, trying to get the pumpkin to sustain resonance on its own. The next few clips are of my best results. After that, for those with a longer attention span, I'll show all the tweaking and tuning I did along the way.
are significant sounds and vibrations coming through our house right now. Like you can hear them. They're completely audible, completely feelable. Is it like a, a pop, like when it ignites, or is it the rumbling of when it's running? Uh, both. You can you can experience both. You can you can hear it from your room. Yeah, which in fairness isn't that far, but also you know should be immune to your explosions out here. Wait, you said through your AirPods too. Through the AirPod Pros with the noise cancellation on. Wow, that's pretty good. Have you no bounds? It's louder than I thought. So those were the best runs that I got. I would probably not call what I built a pulse jet because it can't run on its own without the EDF blowing air in. It's more like an oscillating blowtorch or a turbo powered jack o' lantern. In hindsight, my guess as to why this project didn't work is poor combustion chamber geometry. Most pulse jets have a nice smooth transition between the combustion chamber and the exhaust pipe. Mine is much more abrupt because, well, it's a pumpkin. This probably caused excess drag and turbulence within the airflow. This would prevent the exhaust gas from having enough energy to act like a piston and pull fresh air through the intake and into the combustion chamber. Anyways, here's all the trial and error I went through. Thanks to PCBUA for sponsoring this video. If you remember back to the video where we crashed that big foam cargo plane, you'll know that I started designing a custom BEC that is designed to go in between the RC receiver and servos. I finally got my boards in from PCBUA. And oh boy, let me tell you, the quality is fantastic. It's so awesome getting to see your design come to life. I also got all the components, so now I just have to solder everything on and see if it works. Check out PCBWay.com for more info on their PCB manufacturing and assembly services. Thanks PCBWay. Now back to the video. So I just stuck a longer piece of tube into the decorative floral vase here, and that might give the exhaust gas, as it's rushing out there, it'll have more mass, there'll be more gas in the pipe, so it'll have more inertia to kind of resist the backflow and hopefully suck air through the valve. <laughs> So I just put this little EDF onto the valve um, and I'm just going to turn it on as little as possible. Unfortunately, the, the least I can turn it on is still quite a bit, like there's still quite a bit of breeze blowing out the other side, so I'm a little concerned that the gas won't ignite because there's too much wind blowing around in there. So instead of having the gas pipe go in the side, now I'm having it go up at a different angle, kind of closer to the spark plug, so maybe that'll help it ignite. I can feel the heat from that now. That works. But we're not getting a resonance. It's not a real pulse jet. It's just a fan with a afterburner. So now I'm gonna try that same thing, but with the longer tube. Oh, we definitely got more compression that time. It's looking a little roasty in there. Making pumpkin pie. So at this point, I figured my valve wasn't letting in enough air, so I decided to try a bigger one. I found this HVAC exhaust vent at the hardware store, and it seemed like it might work. To get it to spring shut, I glued a little piece of fiberglass plate to the back. How neat is that? Pretty neat. Ain't that right. It's still not going into resonance, so now I'm gonna try having the EDF blow in this side. Ooh. Still no resonance, bummer. So that showed that the vents definitely shut when it explodes, but then they just don't open back up enough because there's not enough of a low pressure in there. Oh, that ignites really easily. I feel like my combustion chamber might be a little bit too big, so maybe I ought to try that smaller pumpkin that I have. In hindsight, this HVAC vent is probably way too big and has way too much mass to be a successful pulse jet valve. I needed something with lighter valve doors, or reeds, so they can move faster. So I cleaned out the little pumpkin, I've got the same exhaust tube, and I'm going to try the 3D printed valve first. Still no resonance. Damn. I thought my plastic valve doors would be totally roasted at this point, but they're actually still fine. So at this point I watched some YouTube videos about pulse jets and got the idea that I probably wasn't getting enough fuel and air mixing. And also maybe a valveless pulse jet might be a bit more obtainable. So that's what I decided to try. Last night I 3D printed this blue split pipe piece right here. And the idea with this was that the EDF on this side would blow air through 
and then it would create a low pressure in the tube and suck air in this side too. So this would actually be the air intake once it's running. And that actually worked when this thing was not connected to the pumpkin. Um, I did some tests with smoke and you could actually see smoke getting sucked in this hole right here. But the problem is all the aerodynamic drag from the pumpkin builds too much pressure in there and then you actually get air coming out of this hole too. So I just closed up that hole with tape and this is gonna be where I'm adding the fuel now. The fuel rod is just like right in here so that will mix with the air coming from the EDF and then go into the pumpkin, ignite, and then go out the exhaust. So let's give this a shot. That was so good. That was the first time I actually heard some sort of a resonance happening. So I think my airflow from the EDF is too much, so I came over here to block some of the airflow with my hand, and that slowed down the airflow inside enough for it to ignite, and it worked. I would call that a success. <laughs> my success criteria going into this project was very low. I just wanted some sort of a resonance to happen. <laughs> So the tube definitely seemed to help a little bit. I noticed it was kind of exploding more violently at first, so maybe it builds more pressure in there with the tube. So I'm just gonna do a little bit more experimentation with this configuration. Uh, maybe run the fan a little bit faster and see if I can get it resonating for longer. Okay, note to self, never turn the EDF off <laughs> while there could be fire in there, because that time I had flames coming out of this EDF and probably ruined the blades. I'm assuming they're warped now. They don't look bad actually, but yeah. Sounds balanced still. Huh, well. So now just for the sake of experimentation, I've opened up this hole, removed the tape, um, and put the fuel injector a little bit farther down just to see what happens. That didn't work. I had too much air coming out of this hole, um, so the fire also came out of that hole. <laughs> so now I closed off this hole and I stuck the fuel injector in through the hole that the EDF phase wires are coming out of. So that'll get the fuel and air to mix a little bit higher up. Maybe that'll make a difference, not sure. <laughs> so good. Well, I found the limits of my uh, PLA design. Wow, that's car hot carbon. <laughs> so from that I learned that it's good to mix the fuel and air as well as possible. Um, <laughs> that was awesome. It was definitely in a resonance. I could hear it. So this time I'm just going to hold the EDF by hand and blow air into the intake and I have the fuel injector just kind of shoved in there. There will just be fuel uh, getting mixed in with the air all throughout in here. <laughs> So with that one, I learned that without the air flowing through here from the EDF, it won't run on its own. I don't think it was really in a resonance that time. So now our intake has a diameter of one spray paint can. It seems like the intake is too big now because it flames out when I move the EDF. And also from the GoPro video, it looked like uh, the entire volume of the pumpkin wasn't igniting. There was only flame at the back of the spray paint can, like right, right there. And it wasn't getting a chance to ignite the whole thing. So maybe I'm gonna try just sticking this rod all the way in. <laughs> So now I'm gonna try the same thing, but with the EDF running faster. So now I went back to the smaller diameter carbon fiber intake and moved it to the back. Maybe changing the geometry between the intake and the exhaust will make a difference.
I'm thinking maybe my uh, combustion chamber is just too big. So many different things to try here. Okay, so I've got a slightly smaller pumpkin, um, but I have a smaller exhaust and a smaller air intake. So hopefully that'll lead to more compression and <laughs> it might just blow the top off. Yeah, I don't know, let's see what happens. Wowee, that worked way better. It was already starting to get into a resonance. If I would take the EDF away, it would kind of stop, but that was definitely still a huge improvement. Now I'm going to try shoving the gas rod back in there a bit further. So I think sticking the fuel rod all the way into the combustion chamber definitely seemed to help. I think more of the gas was igniting that time because uh, flames were coming out the front even when I was blowing air in directly. I'm going to try again with the EDF revved up a little bit higher. I can hear the heat. I can hear the moisture in the pumpkin sizzling. Um, that was pretty impressive. I was able to crank this thing up to full throttle on a two cell and put it right there and it would stay lit. The best part of this is get pumpkin seeds and delicious. Wow. So now I've got a longer carbon tube that I'm gonna push further back into the combustion chamber just to see what happens. Well, that really didn't seem to help. Maybe if I pull this longer carbon tube out further and just have a longer intake tube. So that definitely seemed to build more pressure inside, but it still won't resonate. So now what I wanna try is taking this air intake tube and putting one of these valves on it. We have this valve that I tried yesterday, and then this is another valve that uses these little uh, reed flappers that'll move in and out. So I'll just glue these onto this tube and then we'll see what happens. Oh, it blew the pumpkin apart. Uh, I'm gonna need more tape. That'll do it. Let's try it again. Woo! Come on, baby. doesn't stay lit without the EDF. I also didn't notice a lot of pulsing, um, not a lot of resonance. You can't see these little things, but if I maybe draw on them a little bit, you'll be able to see that a little bit better. Little, little valves that fold in. Some more tape on there. This is all just extremely janky. I think the jankiness makes it less likely to work, but by how much, I don't know. It doesn't really blow that much air through the valve, doing better before with just the single carbon tube. Maybe I'll just take this off and see if we can go back to how it was doing before. Maybe uh, putting the fuel in through this hole in the side screwed it up. Seems like it's definitely resonating more without a valve. Now I'm going to try it without a intake tube. Oh, it sounds like it's resonating. So that was resonating, uh, but still not without the help of the fan. Well, at least we got resonance. I don't know, that's still pretty cool. <laughs> it might not be a pulse jet in the sense that it's self-sustaining and can keep itself running, but it does some sort of pulsing, so. <laughs>
we're halfway there. Maybe uh, putting the fuel in through this hole in the side screwed it up. Yeah, it seems more resonating. I bought this one, which is called a Cinderella pumpkin. It's not just your everyday pumpkin. Um, it's a little bit smaller, but not really that much smaller. Oh, wow, we. Oh, yeah. Now another hole for this guy. Oh, fuck, that's still really hot. This pumpkin is kind of softer than the normal pumpkins. Yeah, there we go. All right, I think we're ready. Safety glasses, safety hood. Let's do this. Uh, that's a gnarly spark plug. I'm running this at seven kilovolts with that neon sign transformer. So this pumpkin really is not much different in size than the last one we were using. So I don't think it's gonna behave any differently, but maybe the slight change in, in uh, geometry and placement of the intake and the exhaust will magically change something. I don't know. <laughs> Oh. I've got a different kind of tape now so that that doesn't happen. There we go. Go. So now I've got the bigger exhaust on the same pumpkin with the same small intake. Not getting enough compression with the bigger tube, so I'm gonna switch back to the smaller tube and I got a new smaller pumpkin. Unfortunately, it's white, I know, terrible, but uh, it's a little smaller than the old one, not that much smaller. And I've also got a smaller air intake. This is a 25 millimeter carbon tube and then the same black aluminum pipe that I was having good luck with last time. That's, that's really warm. Still won't sustain resonance though if I move the EDF away from the air intake. I actually just switched fuel injector tubes to the shorter version. That was totally resonating. That thing was growling like a tiger. That was so cool. The pumpkin's actually cold. There's so much water in the pumpkins that they don't heat up at all. Oh, that's hot. So that was working better with this shorter fuel tube that I just kind of had lodged right in the front of the air intake. So it was probably mixing the fuel and air better. I've got the 40 millimeter air intake now. getting so much resonance with that. But still, right when I take that EDF away, it just stops. So it's kind of a electric hybrid pulse jet. I'll call it that. So I just moved to the fuel input so that it's going in on the other side of the pumpkin and now it's making so much fire that I'm afraid I'm gonna light the deck on fire. So I gotta make some sort of suppressing wall right there. It sounds like it's just producing so much thrust. Like it sounds really aggressive, but it just won't sustain resonance.
I think what I'll do now is, uh, oh jeez, I'm just melting everything. I think what I'll do now is uh, cover up this intake and put one on the back and see what that does. So now it's just an intake straight out to the exhaust. Oh yeah. pretty well. Maybe I'll try it without the intake now. It seems to be working better with the tube on the intake, so maybe I'll try putting a longer tube on the intake. So I feel like I'm kind of running out of options here. I've uh, found a happy medium in my intake size and I feel like going any smaller on the exhaust side wouldn't help. I do have one slightly smaller pumpkin but it's kind of a weird squashed shape so I'm not really confident that that will work great. But I guess I'll give it a go just because. So this is the smallest pumpkin I could find in a five mile radius. It's also probably got the thickest walls out of all of them so the interior volume is really small too. I've got the gas and igniter on the back because I had good luck with that last time. So let's give it a shot. So it was definitely growling, but still no sustained resonance. So I have this regulator on the propane tank that takes it down to two PSI or half a PSI, I forget. Um, it's pretty low pressure, so I might try and remove that and see what happens. I got rid of the regulator and now we have a properly sketchy setup. So more gas made more fire, but it definitely didn't resonate more. I just took off the air intake tube, we'll see if that makes a difference. Now we're really roasting this pumpkin. <laughs> oh, it's so hot in there. So it's kind of the same story. More fire, but not any more resonance. It was definitely growling pretty good that time, but it, maybe it's burning too rich now. And uh, yeah, maybe I need to try more gas with one of the bigger pumpkins to see if that works. The angle at which I blow the EDF into the hole though definitely makes a big difference. It seems like going in this way uh, is the best, probably because the air is circling around and then going out. It might kind of make a vortex pattern in there since it's going in and then over and out, not sure. <laughs> to stick this tube back in there a bit further because it keeps melting. You might be getting better fuel air mixture with this uh, intake angle because that one seems to produce a lot more heat.
even if I was able to make a better seal around the exhaust, I'm not very confident that this is going to work. I think it'll have the same problem that it's been having. Just a lot of resonance, but not without the EDF. I'm going to try this short, stubby little spray paint exhaust now. <laughs> Definitely not a lot of resonance there. So now I switched back to one of the bigger pumpkins and I've got more gas going in there. So maybe that'll change things. So I just took the intake tube off again. Let's try that. I think I've determined that pumpkins are difficult to convert into self-sustaining pulse jet engines. And I'm gonna call it at that. It's been fun, we got resonance, that was my initial goal. I'm done messing around and trying little tweaks and tunes to get this thing to work. This pumpkin has seen better days. Wowee. Let's see what these look like on the inside. I'm gonna take off all this tape. Yeah, pretty charred. That spark plug is pretty gnarly. So I've got one intact pumpkin left and I've cut two holes, one for the spark plug and one for some propane. And I'm just gonna <laughs> see what happens, see if it blows up there's actually still a flame coming out of there. Oh, it just went out. No, it's still there. It's a little tiny flame. <laughs> Look at that. Woo! <laughs> it's like 30 seconds. Oh, there's still fire in there. <sighs> wow. It's like 30 seconds or 40 seconds after I turned on the propane. I guess that just goes to show that it's not really possible to blow up a pumpkin by just injecting it full of gas and then sparking it. The mixture is just, the air fuel mixture is just not quite right. I did have the spark on before I turned the gas on and I thought that it would ignite once the mixture got lean enough or I guess got right to ignite but I uh, didn't have enough power to blow anything up. So if I can't blow it up then I'll at least turn it into a nice chimenea. Nice. That's pretty good. Ooh -wee. When the lens fogs up like that, it's because in the chemical reaction that ignites propane, water gets created, so it fogs up the lens. Pumpkins make good fire pits. I'm just gonna let this burn and see how long it lasts. I'll keep putting leaves in there. Now I'm just playing with fire. Wow. This thing's been lit for like 15 minutes now and the outside is still cold. Pumpkins are such good insulators. I was just messing around throwing cardboard in there and I was noticing that it was getting into a resonance. I could hear it kind of puttering. It occurred to me afterwards that there's no EDF blowing into the pumpkin and it's sustaining resonance on its own. So this project is a success. The only thing is, I did this on accident so that's not much to boast about. But it's still pretty cool. A cardboard powered pulse jet. Now we're rolling coal. That's just from paper, not having enough oxygen to fully ignite, I think. If I take this out, oh yeah, <laughs> the smoke definitely stops immediately. My aluminum tube just completely melted. That's a bummer. Now I've got a pumpkin snowman stove. That's pretty cool. All the hot air is coming out of here. That is so crazy. This lower pumpkin is still just barely warm and it's been burning for like 25 minutes. Oh yeah, once I open the lower door, it lets more air in. That equals more fire. Oh! <laughs> no! 
finally, like 35 minutes later, the pumpkin is finally starting to get hot to the touch. It's been like an hour and this thing is still intact. It hasn't burned through yet. It definitely smells like roasted pumpkin. This experiment's just turning into a waste of gas. <laughs> oh, it's pretty soft now though, that's for sure. Well, this is gonna go off. Oh wait, that was on. <laughs> this way is off. And that's that. Happy Halloween, everyone.